Yes, indeed, Big Brother Bear here to give you all that you want and what you need. Today, we're going to talk about the NCAA transfer portal. If you're a student athlete going through the process of thinking about transferring, you have to go through the NCAA transfer portal. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to be the most efficient, how to be the most knowledgeable, and how to make your next move your best move in the NCAA transfer portal. So if you don't know, I put out information every week helping student athletes be the very best they can be both in their sport and outside the, in the classroom, just in life as far as being a student athlete. And today I'm going to give you the game as it relates to the NCAA transfer portal. Now this portal is a very controversial portal. Some people say, you know, it's ruining the game and student athletes shouldn't be able to do this. They should have to uh, gut it out, even though coaches don't do it. Um, they should have to gut it out and just stick it out and all this other foolishness. But I'm not even going to get into that because I already made a video about that. But I'm going to give you five things you should be thinking about as it relates to this NCAA transfer portal. And the, and the first one I would say is making sure you're not looking at this NCAA transfer portal as a band-aid. Making sure you're not looking at it like, okay, if I'm, if I'm not happy, I'm just going to leave. If I get uncomfortable, I'm going to leave. If the food isn't right, if, I, if my jersey don't fit, like I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm not getting playing time, I'm going to leave. If coach is being tough on me, I'm going to leave. This is not what that is. Do not, do not make a permanent decision for temporary inconvenience. That is not what this is for, okay? That is not what this is for. First of all, you need to be thinking about graduation. You need to be thinking about if you're actually going to get something out of it. If the only thing you can say about your eligibility as far as being a student athlete is what happened on the court, on the field, on the diamond, on the track, whatever. If that's the only thing you can talk about your college experience, then congratulations, you've lost. You've, you've lost, you've wasted your time. You should have stayed your behind at home, you've wasted your time. But if you want a real experience, then you have got to start thinking about your experiences outside of the game. Everything can be held and, and weighted on just your sport. Your social life makes a difference. Your academic life makes a difference. The networking you're building makes a difference. So I don't want you to just say, okay, well, since this is not working athletically, then I need to leave. That's not, that's the wrong mentality to have. Because if that's the case, what's going to happen is you're going to transfer, transfer, and transfer. Your, your classes aren't going to necessarily transfer. And then when you run out of scholarship, if you want a scholarship, at the end of the time, you're going to have more class to go when you have scholarship. You have more debt to go when you have actual classes passed. And Though you play basketball, play football, or play tennis, or whatever you play, it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth it. As a, as a man right now, have my master's degree, how many people care about that I play basketball? Not very many. Not very many. So that time is limited. And what I don't want you to do is fall a victim to or fall a prisoner to the moment of, you know, I just need to chase whatever best opportunity just for basketball. I need to run, run over here. If they're, they're going to they're give me one more minute, I'm going to go over here. If, if, if I can get a little higher, I go to D1 and I'm at D2, then I'm going to go over here. It's not because I'm upset because the coach, did, coach talked to me bad. He, he pointed me out in front of everybody else. I'm going to leave. That's not what this video is about, okay? It's, it, it, that, that, that will help hurt you in the long run rather than help you. The second thing you need to think about as far as the transfer portal that you may not even realize is you have to be in academic good standings. You have to be in academic good standings. Now, on the site right now, it mentions 2.0. And uh, I want to make sure that you go to the website, ncwa.org, to check it out yourself. I'm going to put the link in the description below so you can click on it and, and kind of read it yourself. I don't want to give you a definite GPA because uh, if it changes, I want this, this video I want this video to be able to help you uh, for as long as possible. And I don't want them to change the GPA and be like, well, Bill told me 2.0. It's a 2.5. Uh, Bill told me 2.5. Now it's 2.7. So do yourself a favor. Though it may be a 2.0 right now, you need to go ahead and make sure that you're familiar with this website and you know the actual GPA when you look at this video. Check it out, ncaa.org, you check it out. But you need to make sure that you're in academic good standings. That's one thing that you need to know as far as this transfer report. It's not a, just to throw your name in the hat, see who's gonna bite, see who's gonna uh, offer me a scholarship. That's not what this is. You gotta make sure you take care of your business and take care of your academics. Number three, the third thing you need to be aware of is something called a one-time transfer exception. So basically, what it is is this. You have to understand that 
like when I was when I was playing, if you transfer to a different school, you would have to sit out for a full year before you could play there. That's two full academic semesters. That's the fall and the spring. You got to sit out. You got to watch the team play. And you can play. But now with this one-time transfer exception, if you take care of your stuff by the deadline, then you can play that very that very next season. So let's say in the spring, you say, you know, I don't want to play. You know, I want to put myself in a transfer for you. You get picked up by the fall. So the very next, so that happens in May. By August, you can play at this new school. You don't have to sit out. But you have to make sure you adhere to that deadline. You have to make sure you adhere to that deadline. Four, I need you to understand that transferring comes with a price, okay? Because when you transfer, you have to go through your athletic director or, or your compliance officer, okay? You know, they, they put you in the, in, in the portal. You don't put yourself in the portal. And when you put your, when they put you in the portal, guess what? Your coach is gonna find out. This ain't no secret stuff. Like, they gonna know you in the doggone portal. And you say, well, Bill, that's not, I don't care. Let me tell you why you should care. Let's say you're in the spring semester and, you, and you're about to go in the summer. And you go in there and you say, uh, well, I'm, I wanna be in put, I wanna be put in the transfer portal. If you get put in the transfer portal, right? And that coach wants you, your, your coach right that you're in right now wants you back for next season, he or she can be like, nah, we're good. Nah, you want to put yourself in a transfer portal? They don't have to renew your scholarship. Don't think that you can do this in, in hiding and you can put yourself in a trans portal, transfer portal, and if no one like that, no one wants you, then you can go back to your school and it's like no harm, no foul. Nah, you got to understand that your coach catch feelings just like you be catching feelings. When you was catching feelings and pouting on the end of the bitch, Right? When you was doing all that, your coach can catch feelings as far as you you actually entertain and going somewhere else. You gotta be understand, you gotta understand that. You gotta understand that before you throw yourself in the transfer portal. And that's not to scare you, that's just to educate you about what lays ahead. Don't jump in the transfer portal and just think things sweet. Well, don't, don't, don't do that. You need to be knowledgeable. And there's a difference as well. I want to also let you know that division one and division two transfer portal is slightly different. So uh, if you're in a division two transfer portal, you can put yourself in a transfer portal mid-year. So let's say, let's say, so your scholarship is for the year, right? So let's say you put yourself uh, in the transfer portal uh, at the start of the spring semester, and you're in Division Two. Try to follow me now. For the Division Two, you put yourself at the beginning of the semester. You say, I will put myself in a transfer portal. You're still on the team. They're going if you're on scholarship. They're going to continue your scholarship for that spring semester. So spring semester starts what? In January, it ends around May. That means at May, they don't have to continue for the next year. They don't have to continue for the semester of all. Follow me now. But now as far as division one, that's for the entire year. Does that make sense? It's for the entire year instead of at a semester break. So so if you say, if you say in, uh, in August that, you know, I don't know, I'm, I want to be putting the transfer. Uh, if you say, if you say like at the beginning of the semester, I want to be put in a transfer portal. In Division One, they don't have to renew your scholarship for that entire year. They don't have to do that. Do some coaches do it? Yes, but they don't have to. So you need to make sure you know the difference. You need to understand that there's a difference between the two. The fifth tip I want to give you as far as this transfer portal is this. Understanding that you're not supposed to contact any coaches unless you're actually in this transfer portal. Like you can get in trouble as far as eligibility if it's found out that before you even got in the uh, transfer portal, you were already contacting coaches or being contacted by coaches when you were supposed to be on somebody else's team. These are things you need to understand if you're going to get into this transfer portal. This is not a this is not a situation that it's a remedy for for the for everything. It, that, that's not what this is. You need to be knowledgeable about this. And this is just a starter video for you to just kind of prime your brain about what's going on. I encourage you to go to ncaa.org to, to, to get an even deeper understanding. But I just want y'all to know that everything ain't sweet as far as this transfer portal, right? This is not something that you can just do because um, you feel like it's going to solve all your problems. You need to be knowledgeable about this because if you're not knowledgeable about it, it can actually hurt you a lot more than it's going to help you. And I'll leave you with this. Again, I'll say this again because it is important. I know people don't say this a lot on, on YouTube and they don't, they don't really say this, but... If the only thing you can say about your student athlete career is held in the hands of your sport, you lost. You wasted your time, okay? You've wasted your time. So don't let that be you. I know plenty of people in that boat.